and 11 meters above sea level. It is classed as a dormant volcano and it has erupted five times in the last 18,000 years. The last eruption was 10th of June 1886. That started with some localized earthquakes. Then, in the early hours of the morning, the top of the mountain burst into life and started to erupt. Pretty soon after that, the whole top of the mountain was glowing. That's because two tectonic plates had opened up, tearing the ground apart and splitting the mountain in half, forming the Tanawera Rift, which goes from the far side of the mountain right up through Wailangu Double Valley. Once the rift had opened up, the surface waters headed down the rift to meet the magma that was on its way up. And once it turned there, the water flashed into steam, causing huge explosions and blowing out 21 craters along the rift. The noise of those explosions could be heard right up the top of the North Island and as far south as Christchurch. The debris from the craters of the fort were fired high into the air. It was very hot, very liquefied and full of gases. And once it hit the ground, it headed out in huge waves. Some of those waves were up to 30 metres high, travelling across the ground very quickly. This wiped out all trees, animals and birds for around 6 kilometres. It also destroyed 7 Maori villages, killing between 100 and 150 people. By daybreak, the eruption had all finished, but the devastation was left for everyone to see. And facing you on the mountain right now, a huge crater is known as the Tarawera Chasm. 500 meters across, 500 meters deep, and is the last place on the mountain that was erupting on the 10th of June 1886. The only place in the whole valley we can keep pest free. So on the island there is no rats, mice, stoats, weasels, ferrets, cats, hedgehogs, all of these possums, deer or pigs. Always good vegetation growth and a safe home for the birds to nest. In return, those birds visit by many thermal valley for feeding purposes. after the eruption. This crater, 70 meters deep, 20 meters below the water, 50 meters above. It is estimated that this crater was formed during the 1886 eruption in around three and a half minutes. So that gives you some idea of the force of those explosions that night. It's also a microclimate in here and this is the first place plants started to regenerate after the eruption when a small colony of ferns were found growing on the crater walls a few weeks after the eruption. In 1913, steelhead rainbow trout from America were introduced into the lake along with some smelt, which is a small fish to feed the trout. Since that date, the lake has never been restocked. Trout numbers remain high, and because it's a landlocked lake, they remain pure to their breed. Fishing brushes on Lake Road to Mahana are very minimal as access to the lake is very, very difficult. 